I'll go on and launch RStudio Studio there. I'll just uh, click there and it will open. When you open RStudio, Studio, we see that there are four pens there. And uh, I'll start by looking at the top left hand pen, which is uh, the source pen. In this uh, pen there, you can uh, write a command a scripts. Then after writing the commands there, you can uh, then run the scripts. But in this tutorial, I'm not going to run any scripts in the source pen there. I will now go on and look at uh, the console. In the console, you can uh, type in your commands there. And when you press enter, when in the console, then the command that you would have uh, entered is uh, executed. So after the console, I will now go on and uh, look at uh, the workspace. In the workspace on the top right hand corner there, that's where you can uh, see your variables. You can also see the history. When you are looking at the history, you'll be looking at, um, at the commands uh, that you would have uh, entered and they will appear in the tab there where it says uh, history. So it is helpful if you want to reuse any commands. And you can also import datasets when you are in the workspace there by clicking on import dataset. I now move on to the bottom right hand corner there where we have uh, files, plots, packages, help and viewer. And there you can uh, open any files that you want to open. And that's where the plots will appear if you plot any functions in the in R Studio there. Then there's that tab there on packages. On this tab you can use it to see installed packages or you can use it to install other packages that you might want to use. We'll look at installing packages uh, in the coming tutorials. Besides the packages, we also have the tab on help. If uh, there is uh, anything that is not clear, you can just try to check on that tab, then you can uh, get some help on uh, running some things in uh, RStudio. Studio. I'll now go on to look at some uh, basic uh, functions. I'll look at uh, the functions which are appearing on the right there and we'll look at arithmetic. The first one, you type in 3 plus 5, and then uh, you press enter, it uh, just gives you the answer there as uh, an 8. For number 2, 3 minus 5, you just type in your 3, and then minus 5, and then press enter. And then for number 3, 3 times 5, you just type in the 3, and then times 5 and it will give you the result there is a 15. So here I'm just using R Studio as a calculator. Now number 4, 10 divided by 2. So it's 10, then divided by 2. Then I press enter, and it will give me a 5. Now for functions now, I'll go on to the natural logarithm of uh, or the natural logarithm of 3 there, I will type log. Because in R Studio, when you type log, it reads it as the natural logarithm. So it's log 3. So that's the command for the natural logarithm. And it will give us 1.098612. For the exponent, we have exp, open parenthesis, then you put in the number. So exponent of 3 there. And I press enter, and then it will give 20.0855. For number 3, the log, that's the logarithm of 100 base 10. In this case, you say log, open parenthesis, and you are saying the logarithm of 100. In this case, we are specifying the base now, and we say base equals 10. But if you don't specify the base, then it takes it as if it's a natural logarithm. So base equals to 10 there and I'll press enter. So the logarithm of 100 base 10 it gives the 2. On number 4, the logarithm of 100 base 2. So log open parenthesis, I type in the number 100, then go on and type the base. We are saying now base is a 2. And then I go on and press enter and it gives us a 
ambata logarithm is uh, 6.643856. So that's the logarithm of Anrita base 2. I now move on to complex uh, numbers. When you are in R Studio, the letter I is uh, treated as a special character, the imaginary number. So I'll go on and evaluate the questions which are appearing on the right there. We have uh, 3 plus 16i. So I have my 3, then uh, plus 16i in the parenthesis there. And then I'll put a plus sign. And then uh, I'll go on and write that part 8 minus uh, 10i. So I'll write then my plus 8 minus uh, 10i. I write my 8 and then minus 10i and it gives a 11 plus 16i. To give the command that I had just entered, I press the up arrow and uh, the one that I entered before appears. So I can just edit that plus to a minus and uh, it will give me the second question there. 3 plus 16i minus 18 minus 8 plus 10i and uh, I'll press enter and it gives us the solution is minus 5 plus 26i. For question 3, I'll press the up arrow so that the command that I entered last comes back. Both that way is easier to edit. And then I'll just remove that uh, minus sign there. And in this case, we want to multiply those two complex numbers. So I'll put a multiplication sign where we had the minus sign. And then I'll go on and uh, press enter. And you get the result is 184 plus 98i. For question number four, I'll press the up arrow so that I obtain the last command that I had entered. And then go on and edit it and uh, change that multiplication to a division. So we have the division of uh, those two complex numbers appearing in number four, and uh, that will be the results of uh, the division. Now we go on to evaluating square roots. To evaluate the square root of uh, five there, we use the command SQRT. So we type SQRT, then in the parentheses, put in the five there. So in this case, we type in command sq rt, then open parenthesis, then put in the 5, then I press enter. So it will evaluate the square root of 5. And the result is 2.236068. I now move on to assigning values. So in this case, I'll be assigning values and I'll be looking at uh, the questions that will be appearing on the right there. I'll assign x the value of 5. So we say x equals to 5. Then just to check, I type x. Then I press enter. Then it gives us a 5. Or the other option, you type x less than sign, then a minus, then you put a 5. It's still assigning x the value or is the other way around, you can put 5, then a minus, then a greater than, then x. It's appearing as if there's a, an arrow there. So it, we are saying you are assigning x and the value of 5. So it's an option of assigning x 5 there. And uh, we can, uh, I now go on and assign y the value of uh, 15. I say y equals to 15. It is assigned the value there. And then I can, uh, use the assigned value to evaluate x plus y. So we have x plus y is a 20 there because it's taking the x that we have set to be 5 and uh, y which we have set to be 20. I now go on to entering vectors and uh, we'll be looking at uh, the vectors which are appearing on the right there. So we start by entering the x there which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And I will use the C command. So I will say x is equals to C, then open parenthesis, 
and then type in those numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. After writing those numbers, then I press enter. So we have entered that factor. Then just to check, I type X, then press enter. And we see that we have the numbers 1 to 8. I can go on and look at another option of entering that. And I can use the colon 1, colon 8. It lists the numbers 1 to 8. So it's the same thing. And uh, we can also use another option, the sequence x equals to seq, open parenthesis. And we are saying sequence 1, and we put the last number 8 there. It will list the numbers again 1 to 8. Now moving on to the vector y there, we can use sequence to enter that vector. So seq, and we press the first number, it's a 2, and the last number is a 16. But this one, they are increasing by units of 2. So we have to specify that it's increasing by 2. So when you're using the sequence function, you use by 2 to specify the incremental steps. So that command there, if I press enter, it will give us the y. Just type the y there and press enter. And just to check, so it has entered those values 2, 4, 6, up to 16. I now move on to entering the set, which is appearing on the right there. And I'll use the function sequence. So SEQ, I type in the smallest value there, the 5, and uh, the last number is an 8.5, and it's increasing by steps of 0.5. So I specify the steps there is 0.5, and then I'll go on and press Enter. And then just to check, I'll type in the set and press Enter, and then we have the set there is appearing just as it is uh, you know, on the right there. So we have the numbers 5, to 8.5. We can go on and uh, let's say find the mean of uh, that uh, vector x that we identified. So it's mean of uh, the value, then in the parenthesis. And we can look at the median as well, median of x. Then I press enter. It will give us the median of uh, those numbers. Yeah. And uh, if you want the minimum value, you can just type in mean of x then press enter it gives us a one there and for the maximum just type max open parenthesis x and then you have maximum value of uh, those numbers in x there it will give us an uh, eight okay for the sum summing those numbers in x you just type sum and it gives us 36 And for the standard deviation of those numbers 1 to 8, you just type SD and it gives us uh, the standard deviation there of the numbers 1 to 8 that we had uh, entered. Press enter and it gives us 2.44949 as the standard deviation for those values 1 to 8. There's another option of uh, getting a summary of uh, a variable that we would have entered. If you type in summary, it will give you the minimum in the first quartile, the median, mean, the third quartile, and the maximum 